thank you so very much for choosing to stay with us in this hour and in case you're just joining us welcome to Kenya's gold now it is time for the gold conversation and today we are going to be doing things a little bit different now before we took a break we promised you that we will be having a vet right here in this farm and he's going to shed more light on the do's and don'ts of chicken farming and because we are those people that keep their promises here is our vet and guest of the day thank you so very much dr james for joining for meeting us again today thank you for Leo to farm good this is my bedroom and thank you so very much for making time straight into it we have been on a journey on chicken farming and so many people have concerns they have interest in the business they're speaking very highly of it so there's need for a lot of guidance for those who want to get into it and they're still skeptical right now because of your expertise being a vet a health practitioner being in this structure which is a very important aspect in chicken farming what do you think about this structure what have we gotten correct and what do you think we could improve on thank you very much um, Dr. James Maima James and Jerry Maima I'm a vet and uh, an animal production and animal nutrition mm -hmm. and I uh, specialize on uh, animal production animal I think animal diseases mm -hmm. and also advise on structure here we are, we are in a farm here by this farm of uh, Mama Conservata mm -hmm. he has he has paid four thousand bucks mm -hmm. uh, it seems that she, she consulted the uh, a structure of experts mm -hmm. because uh, from my measurement the, the spacing the space uh, the, 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 each, uh, bird is, each bird is occupying is around 1.5 feet square. Mm -hmm. According to me, that's a tick. All right. The other thing which is, he has done so well is the inclination, east west inclination. Most of the farmers do not ask experts when they are constructing their, either their cattle or their poultry structures. Mm -hmm. You have you need to consult before you construct. Mm -hmm. yes, they need to be inclined in at least west direction. Upper inclination, I think we may be confused. Please give us more details of what you mean when you're talking about inclination. We come from the east, unless there is a, a, a natural barrier. Mm -hmm. So this is to allow ease of what, I, what we call aeration and we are removing what we call uh, maybe ammonia and uh, other carbon dioxide from the, from the room. Mm -hmm. So naturally, we will always come from the east, mm -hmm. unless there is a barrier. And when I'm putting up my structure, who do I go to to give me that advice? The advice, uh, especially where people we call uh, structural experts. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time we have, uh, the, we have a vet, the, it, it's usually a consortium, we have a vet, an architect, and uh, they call me the engineer, mm -hmm. or a food worker. He's guided by the vet on what we call parameters, mm -hmm. the architecture, the, 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 the structure, mm -hmm. and then uh, the food executes the, the engineer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are there affordable services, those ones? For a startup, mm -hmm. you can have a vet mm -hmm. and a food. Mm -hmm. But if for big infrastructure, if you are doing 10,000, 20,000, you need uh, an actor. Right. The stability of the structure. See, now, like now, you are on a hard time, mm -hmm. a hard time. Mm -hmm. So here, you need uh, the advice for from your advice and where you sit as a health practitioner, what is the correct way of having your feeders? Uh, the other good thing that the farmer has done is mm -hmm. the, feed, the feeding needed, mm -hmm. the feeding trap, and also there is the drinking. Mm -hmm. Drinkers. Eh? Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, one, if they are so low, the, the, the bird will vacate on the, on the what we call the drinkers and also the, the, the feeders. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is one area. And when they defecate where they contaminate the feed, maybe one is sick of cocodiosis, the other one will pick up and the, the, the disease will spread so fast. Mm -hmm. That is one of the reasons, one of the major reasons why we raise them. Number two, you also raise the drinkers so that uh, you do not wet the floor. When the wet over the floor is wet, that will encourage so many diseases including pneumonia, <laughs> including cocodiosis, mm -hmm. all those bad diseases like that. Oh, yes. that that uh, contributes to losses in farm, in mm -hmm. the farm. Right. Yeah. How often should you clean them? It is advised daily that you clean your feeder. Mm -hmm. I especially your drinkers. You have an usually not clean that, but uh, drinkers should be cleaned daily mm -hmm. with uh, some very favorable disinfectants. Mm -hmm. uh, some disinfectants which are bad and which, you, which are very okay. Even, even if uh, uh, the, the bad 
using to water with some disinfectant. Mm -hmm. They are out. So you clean with disinfectant every day. Okay, now let us talk about the system that is used in this place. In, in this farm, they are what we call a deep heater system. Mm -hmm. Whereby the bags, well, well, the leftover, we have, we have what we call the beddings plus the leftover to what the bag is eating. Mm -hmm. We call what we call the beddings. Mm -hmm. That is what we call, uh, the, uh, the, as they accumulate, we form the, the litter. Mm -hmm. Like this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this, this is a mixture of, uh, of uh, rice husk mm -hmm. and the feed leftovers. Mm -hmm. So deep litter has feed leftovers and uh, what we call uh, beddings will be rice husk. Mm -hmm. Some farmers use uh, wood shavings, mm -hmm. some, other, some other farmer uses uh, what we call uh, wood bran. Mm -hmm. So that mixture is what we call, constitute what we call uh, Deep meter system. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages of deep meter system is that uh, uh, birds waste some feeds. Mm -hmm. Waste some feeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so there, feeds. There, here there is some feeds. And these feeds are very expensive. Are very expensive. Yes. Yeah. So that is one of the advantages. Mm -hmm. But one of the advantages, mm -hmm. the animal is able to. to uh, the animal has like five freedoms. Okay. One of the freedom is to express normal behavior. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the Expressing normal behavior. It's like scratching, scratching. Their fingers, This is a way of that them is, cleaning that themselves. That is one of their freedoms. Yes. That is one of their freedoms mm -hmm. to express normal behavior. Mm -hmm. So that is right. This is one that why most, most farmers are uh, returning to new mm -hmm. uh, that. The other we have used uh, cages, but uh, those in cages do not enjoy that. So with a deep litter system, mm -hmm. what more can a farmer do to also ensure that there is utmost cleanliness? Mm -hmm. And then also, if you walk around, you can see lambs yeah. formed in the deep litter system. Yes. Is that recommended? And if not, what can be done? Well, one of the challenges uh, in the deep litter system, mm -hmm. especially the split of water. Mm -hmm. The split of water forms lamps, and from the lamps you get wet floor, mm -hmm. wet floor you get diseases, especially pneumonia, you have pneumonia, the tibia is so spread using the wet, wet, wet readings. Mm -hmm. So that uh, one of the disadvantages of deep litter mm -hmm. is that split mm -hmm. of water, water will you know, what, what, uh, what uh, is everywhere in the floor, mm -hmm. in the buildings. Mm -hmm. One of the ways of controlling this is a lamp. Mm -hmm. big, right? We have a big one. These are some of the disadvantages of uh, deep litter. litter system. Right? Mm -hmm. These clamps form from, uh, from uh, if you can see, look, look at this area, mm. they form from here. The water. One of the ways I advise farmers to control mm -hmm. this uh, mm -hmm. is to ensure every day mm -hmm. they remove one feet of beddings mm -hmm. around the drinker. Mm -hmm. If they do that, the litter will be dry for at least three weeks. All right. Yes, that is one of the ways you can prove that. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, sometimes you find farmers are not able to match that because maybe the workers are not able to do that. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is, you know, is uh, what we call a uh, big gym workers. Mm -hmm. We advise them to do that. Some don't, mm -hmm. some will do. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the farmer has other duties to attend. Mm -hmm. yes. Once you are able to remove a bit, uh, about a meter, you uh, say? About a feet. A feet. Uh, around the drinker. Uh -huh. yes. You'll be safe. Yeah, you'll be safe. But Very good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you are able to do that, you will have a, 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 a dry beddings in a deep litter. What are the compulsory vaccinations that we need to do? And also, we have had the opportunity to speak to different farmers who speak on they do it themselves. Yeah. They mix some of the vaccines with water. Yeah. We'd like to know for you, is it advisable for farmers to do it themselves? Yeah. And what are some of the common mistakes farmers might do when vaccinating their chicken? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Chicken, especially layers are vaccinated against several diseases. One of them being the Pasha diseases, which is endemic. Uh, it's all over the country. We also have another one which we call uh, Bubera disease. We also have another one we call Salmonella. Another one we call uh, Pariza. Another one we call Fulcox and Fulcox. Mm -hmm. When they are coming out of the Shah Pasha, they are being vaccinated against uh, Marex, Newcastle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, so each 
you should believe that we should the farmers to the of the vaccination. You should the farmers to the photo to the letter. The very subject to follow it to the But sometimes, because of different areas, they need to, a farmer need to vet to advise them. The other are the most serious diseases because sometimes a vet can change the product depending on the disease that is roaming at that area. So a vet needs to advise a farmer on how to vaccinate. Because sometimes, most of the mistakes that they usually do to, to mix live vaccines with pollinated water. At what point do you know that now it's time for, you know, to normalize uh -huh. We need to bring uh -huh. more, you know, young ones. At what point are you done with this ones? From a animal production point, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like this bag, this is a lot of water. Mm -hmm. uh, we are consuming two bags of feeds. Mm -hmm. Two bags of feeds, which has allowed uh, Around the 7600. The moment this farmer will collect 20 tons, even if it is simple, even the, the price of eggs is equal to the price of feeds. Mm -hmm. That is how it is. Okay. If, the, if, it, if the animals are, are feeding on 7800, mm -hmm. and he's, collect, he, he's collecting eggs for 7800 from that bag, mm -hmm. that is how it is. To dispose them? Because any, our, any extra day, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. How do we prepare the room to bring in yes. other new ones? And can you do it immediately? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. One of the things uh, is a concept is if we call all in or out. Mm -hmm. All in or out. Mm -hmm. So the, this whole batch will be, the farmer should be advised and is always advised to, to defraud the whole stock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I throw a water, I will the water, and then this place is clean. Using disinfectants, fumigator, mm -hmm. and then you feed their machine from fumigation. Mm -hmm. Usually, there are pets who have that. Fumigate mm -hmm. at least three times mm -hmm. before you bring a new crop. Mm -hmm. You also need at least two months. Mm -hmm. Two months. One is a full day. You only need at least two months. So, for two months, nothing is nothing happening. Nothing. And you clean at least three months. Mm -hmm. There is the first one we call it the cleaning machine. Mm -hmm. Be the disadvantage of me bringing in um, fresh stock immediately after I release this one. One of the things is uh, that um, as they age, there are diseases that you never make them sick because they are adults. Mm -hmm. They will bring you young ones, mm -hmm. they will collapse, they will, be, they will get seriously sick out of those normal diseases. Mm -hmm. Those things you are calling normal diseases, eh? mm -hmm. they will get, they will collect them and they get sick and you might lose a whole flat. This farmer has not tried. One of the things that also I may have that we have done for it is the balancing the number of the feeders and drinkers. I have counted of the in this one batch one of one thousand. Mm -hmm. There are twenty feeders. That is the right number. Mm -hmm. There are also ten drinkers. Mm -hmm. That is the right number. Right number. Tip. So she has been consulting the right person. We also did ask our viewers back at home to give us feedback and also ask some questions regarding chicken farming and it's time for me to sample some of the feedback and you're going to be helping us answering some of that. So we have one from Swaz Peter who says feeds prices are the biggest challenge. What can a farmer who probably wants to do own formulation, what can they do? Is that possible and will it be cheaper? The feed formulation is a science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a science that mm -hmm. most farmers are not fast mm -hmm. So a farmer will just collect some data or some information from another farm and mm -hmm. do sale formulation. They usually have what we call very balanced feeds. They may be running from a, 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 a bad problem to get to a worse problem. Before you, you move from one company, field company to another, you consult your vets, consult your nutritionist if you have. Mm -hmm. The farmers, uh, the way we are, the more we are moving, how much you have, should know, at least know, what you can have. You know our vets, our nutritionist. Mm -hmm. They will guide you properly where to move, moving from one company to another. Mm -hmm. So the cost of feed may not go down, because one, see, it is, it is uh, subject to price, price of, of fuel. Mm. It's also subject to, to what we call the dollar. Mm -hmm. Most of the raw materials that we get, we get them from, from outside the camps. 
So Dora and those issues are similar. But the three, they are also what we call a couple of uh, the character changes. That is previously before uh, before they were being in the beforehand. Those guys were not. And if you are doing six hundred, you are at least and they can sustain their farm. So people will not go down, I see. But the only thing they can go down if there is a general macroeconomic shift from the administration, whereby Dora will you have a better at 100, mm. maybe all those things. Yeah. And the fuel may be at 100. That, that, There's that, a lot at play. What I would say for a farmer, because there are things which can affect a lot. The only thing that they can change, mm-hmm. like proper husband. Mm-hmm. Proper husband is having disinfectant, mm-hmm. having a good, uh, a good house that uh, you have been properly guided, mm-hmm. preventing diseases, proper vaccination. Those are the only uh, things that uh, we also have another one from Calvin who says hanging now while wearing chicken some get sick at some point and we slaughter and eat is it dangerous yes mm-hmm. when they are sick mm-hmm. I realize that they should not eat right one of the things that uh, we are really fighting currently mm-hmm. is climate change mm-hmm. climate change you to climate change and other things. If you consume an animal that has died out of disease, mm-hmm. you never know, you might, you might create the next epidemic. So maybe just to take the last one, we have one from Slave who says, I really fear chicken farming because of the horror stories of sometimes you might wake up and find your tiny little ones, all of them are dead. The horrific one I have seen is due to maybe thunderstorm and the uh, lightning. They really fear thunderstorm and uh, but out of the disease is a really rare. If you have followed proper vaccination, mm-hmm. if you have given uh, proper feed, you have given feed which uh, mm-hmm. comes from a uh, sub mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's very good. And if you are advised like that, mm-hmm. you have a mm-hmm. you have a your friends. Here we have um, the older layers, but we have the younger ones in the building stage, mm-hmm. which are very sensitive. Yeah. What are the very key things you need to get correct mm-hmm. at that stage? Is to follow the vaccination protocol because most of the vaccinations are done between the one and the week 16. Mm-hmm. This is really vaccinated. It is to have the immunity of the of the younger stages. Mm-hmm. So the, that is one vaccination. Mm-hmm. The other one is hygiene. Hygiene is, must be very crucial. Mm-hmm. You, you give them very good uh, clean water. Mm-hmm. Also certify clean things. Mm-hmm. But it's not really, you, 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 it's very easy to become a mm-hmm. If you just follow some, and you, you just follow some, almost three pieces. Right. And you also have a good house. For someone who wants to get into the business and they need, do you know help on coming up with the budget? What do they need to do? Are those services that you provide? Yes, as uh, animal production, mm-hmm. nutrition, I know our uh, have mm-hmm. is to do budget. Somebody went to today's, uh, today, I don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. We need budget for that. Mm-hmm. We are there for them. All right. Yeah. So all in all, are you advising young people that chicken farming is a venture that they can get into? It is a venture because you can start as small as 200 bucks. A small structure of around uh, 300 feet mm-hmm. square. Do you have a capital? How much is it? All right. And I can get a chick at now the 100. Thank you so very much, Dr. James, for talking to us yes. and of course giving us so much light on what we need to do when it comes to chicken farming. Yes. So right for me, my farmer for the day, out of 10, how many marks are we giving my farmer? That's a good score. Yeah. That's a good yeah. score. She That's like an A minus. Which is good. Aye, she great. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. That is what we had for you in our gold conversation, of course, with our vet, who was giving us the do's and the don'ts, and also giving us some marks for our farmer of the day. I hope you have learned a lot more on what you need to know when it comes to chicken farming. And right here at Kenya's Gold, we are determined and going to make sure that you get all the necessary advice as you venture into agriculture. Please do keep watching. We do have a lot more.